Hey guys, Joe here. And today I just got an order of a bunch of equipment and I figured I'd just go ahead and share some of the equipment I ordered for an upcoming offshore and underwater project. Thought you might like to see what I'm using and get my insight on why I use these items. So. Here we go. So we're gonna open the big box first. Ooh. Always exciting opening new camera stuff. What do we have? Bunch of plastic. Unfortunately, plastic is not good, but keeps the equipment safe, I guess. A receipt, that is important. First things first is a new camera. This is the Canon 5D Mark IV. And I debated about getting this camera versus the 1DX Mark II. I initially wanted the 1DX Mark II for a few reasons. However, this camera is very similar. The one main difference between this and the 1DX Mark II that makes me want the 1DX Mark II is the 1DX Mark II can film 120 frames per second at 1080 resolution. This camera can only do it at 720 resolution. So that's my compromise. Now, having said that, this camera is about half the price and it does just about everything else. The other thing that is of interest to me with the 1DX Mark II is it's the same size full frame sensor. However, it's less resolution, has less megapixels. And what that might mean is that it might do a little bit better in low light than this camera. And so that has me curious. Having said that, this is basically the same camera as far as my intentions are concerned for video. The 1DX Mark II is actually a really good kick butt sports action camera. That's not an important part. I'm doing some video stuff with these cameras. The other reason I got this camera was I already have one. I'm actually filming with that. And um, it just makes it kind of simpler to have the same cameras for continuity reasons. To try to keep things simple, I gotta remember the projects I'm doing, I'm on a boat and I'm underwater and there's not a lot of time to make things complicated. So I don't want to have 15 different cameras and get confused about menus and whatnot. So having the same cameras will help for, for these upcoming projects. I also use this camera in underwater housing for some of these projects. And so it's nice uh, to have a backup if for some reason I have an issue with one of the cameras. So those are my main reasons. Again, between this and the one the X Mark II, for my reasons, this camera should work well. I may still look into getting the 1DX Mark II, but for now, went with the 5D Mark IV. So that's that. What else we got? This is um, battery grip. I guess you can put a couple batteries in this. Extends the battery of that camera. Also adds some beefiness to the camera, which I like. I can't fit this in the underwater camera housing, but when I do topside work, I can put this on the camera. It beefs it up quite a bit. I think having a bigger camera makes it easier to hold uh, for stability reasons. And also it looks more professional having a bigger camera. So this is the Canon battery grip for the 5D Mark IV. Pretty cool. Canon lenses. So I already have access to quite a few Canon lenses, but I wanna go ahead and, and get a couple more for uh, some of my needs. Now, lenses vary for in price and quality and what they can do. And again, going back to what I'm doing, offshore filming, I'm on boats, I'm underwater. I have kind of a narrow range of what I need and what works well for my activities. And my recommendation on a boat and or underwater work is to stick with wider angle lenses. And what works well for me is having a wide angle lens that has some telephoto ability so I can do some zooming. What I did here is I got 1740 which is a pretty wide range. And it's very similar to the uh, 1635 I'm filming with there. I could use this lens underwater or top side. That wide angle helps well for underwater shots because when I'm underwater, I want a wide angle because I need to be as close to my subjects as I can be because of turbidity and things in the water. So a wide angle is important for that. Telephoto or super zoom lenses really don't have a place underwater for at least the work I do. Neither do they serve a purpose on a boat. I would never really zoom in to 400 on anything I'm doing on a boat. So wide angle lenses work well. This was a kit, came with a 1740 and a 50 millimeter. The 50 millimeter, I don't know that I'll use on the boat so much, but it works good for interviews and things like that. Now these aren't the most expensive lenses, but they will function well for what I need. You could get faster lenses than this, but 
the tensions of these are gonna be used mainly top size, so I'll be in bright sun. So that's not really a factor. Plus, the project monitor are kind of rough and tough, and there's likelihood I can damage some equipment. I'd much rather risk damaging a less expensive lens than a super, super expensive lens that basically does the same thing. So these will work well for my projects. And part of the promotion when I bought the camera was a camera bag. So I got a camera bag. I'm gonna show you actually what I'm going to use for, for my equipment when I'm on a boat here in a minute. But the camera bag will come in handy. And what else do we got here? Usually try to get camera cards that are pretty fast to handle the video with some capacity. I believe this one actually came with the camera as part of the deal as well. This is just a 64 gigabyte card. Looks like it's pretty fast as well. So that should work well. And then I also got a polarizer filter for the 50 millimeter lens. I have a polarizer for this lens I'm filming on now, which actually matches the diameter of the other 1740 lens. This will go on the 50. And polarizers work well. They're not something I use underwater. However, I do use them when I'm outdoors pretty much all the time, especially if you're in the bright sun. I think they work well for DSLR images. They just give you, in my opinion, a more dynamic range. It helps with those real high bright skies to tone those down a little bit and get some saturation in the skies. I like that quite a bit. Plus, it cuts out the glare on the water. So, I think polarizer filters are a must when you are filming or shooting pictures on a boat or in the ocean or outside. My little tidbit there. Now that's the main camera stuff. Uh, let's just see here. This is um, an extra camera battery for the uh, 5D Mark IV. So, boom. Okay, and last big thing here container. Oh, by the way, played scratch off the other day and one of these tickets has a hundred dollar win on it. So pretty stoked about that. Anyway, next. So back to what I want to carry the equipment and when I'm going out on these offshore trips. One of the things about doing offshore filming and offshore photo work is that you got to take boats to go out in the ocean. And a lot of times the ocean can be a little rough and bumpy and cameras can get beat up in your boat ride. So it's very important to protect those cameras. So I like to use very secure containers. These are water tight containers and I believe they come with, this one should come with some foam in it. So you can see the foam and then what I can do is cut this customly to fit the camera. So I will use this camera um, I'll store it in here, likely with the lens on it, a primary lens, maybe store another lens in there and a few other gadgets and it'll be nice and secure in here. Plus, it's probably watertight, they say it is, so if for some reason the case went in the water, the camera would be spared. So these are very valuable to have and great for what I'm doing at least. So that's it guys. These are just a few things that I'll be using on some upcoming offshore and underwater projects. Hopefully some of you found it helpful. If so, please consider subscribing, give the video a like, and thanks for watching. I'm Joe Kistel. The question is what to do with the winnings from these lotto tickets is do you cash out or do you buy more lotto tickets? So, Curious to your opinions, please leave a comment below what you would do if, if you won a few pennies with some lotto tickets like this. Thanks for watching, guys.